whether it be a cow horse or a cutter, I mean, they've been taught certain things and they're all positive and they're good things, but it's just that you need to figure out a way to be prepared for that and have a plan on how you're gonna go and be patient and get through it and get that horse the best start he can. Welcome to season three of the Short Score, the Team Roping Journal's weekly news update show, where you can find the latest on the sports leaders from the jackpot world of the USTRC and the World Series of Team Roping to the pro rodeo ranks. I'm Chelsea Schaefer. And I'm Caitlin Gustav. And we'll be your hosts. Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode of The Short Score. We're gonna do it different today and we're gonna have a roping lesson with Burt McGill. These are some of our favorite episodes to do and they're definitely some of your favorites. You listen to them longer, you listen to them more times, and more of you listen to them than anything else. So we're gonna ex be excited to roll some of these out in the coming year. This episode is by California horse trainer Burt McGill and his insights into a rope horse's previous job are absolutely critical when it comes to your training program. So I hope you enjoy this episode with Bert. He's one of our favorites to work with, and I look forward to talking at y'all soon. Today's episode of The Short Score is brought to you by the Cowgirl Gathering. On November 13th, there's a team open with 2,500 added in the open and 7,500 added in the nine and a half. On November 14th, they're having a breakaway roping with 11,500 added in the open and 10,000 added in the challenger. And there's a barrel race on November 15th with 20,000 added in the open 5D and 3,500 added in the paint horse bread incentive program. This is an amazing event that is part of a huge weekend in women's rodeo. That's alongside the WCRA's Women's Rodeo World Championships and it's alongside the WPRA World Finals. That weekend is gonna give out $1.2 million to women in rodeo, and the Cowgirl Gathering is another very special part of that. They're going to have the Cowgirl Essence Exchange as well across the street at the Cowboy Channel Studios. And remember, it is all in the Fort Worth Stockyards, the Cowgirl Gathering in the Fort Worth Stockyards, November 13th to the 15th. Hello, this is Burt McGill, and today I want to talk to you about work experience and how it affects the future of my head horse prospects. What I mean by that is every horse has a past and they come from somewhere. And that first career, those experiences and those tendencies are something that we need to take into consideration as far as strengths and weaknesses when we go to start making them a rope horse. Bottom line is that the first three or four years of that horse's life, he was probably bred and trained to do a specific event, and nine times out of 10, that was not to be a head horse. So we have to take into consideration what that job was, and that's gonna dramatically affect some of our expectations on what they should be when we're starting these horses out of the box. Over the years, I've had horses that I've started that, um, that have come from all different walks of life and all different disciplines. Uh, a lot of the cutters, if you're able to find one large enough that's got the right substance and confirmation, they make really good head horses, but there's also things that you have to take into consideration with them. And uh, not too long ago, I had one that was a three-year-old that I bought. He was the whole package and uh, just got a little bit big, which was perfect. So, well, one of the biggest things that this horse, uh, or one of the holes that he had starting off with was he was scared to death to get next to the chute or uh, anytime that cow was in the chute, I mean, he would overreact and it took a long time to really get that horse really comfortable and uh, working right out of the box. And, you know, it ended up coming, but it took, you know, several months to of just scoring and just uh, keeping him quiet right there. And out in the field, everything was great. It was just whenever he was a little bit overreactive in the box but you know that's something that now you know i mean i really take that into consideration with uh, if i do have a cutter or say even a cow horse uh something that you know and it's not anything that 
you need to crucify that horse up. He's just doing what he was had been taught for the first year and a half of his life. You know, he had been taught to keep his distance away from a cow. Cow moves, he moves, and um, anyways, so we're just by, so that's what I'm getting at is that whether it be a cow horse or a cutter, I mean, they've been taught certain things and they're all positive and they're good things, but it's just that you need to figure out a way to be prepared for that and have a plan on how you're gonna go and be patient and get through it and get that horse the best start he can. One discipline that I will say that I've had not very much success with is uh, converting them over to head and steers. And that's anything that's been in a reining program for any sort of time. And um, it's just the opposite. You know, what they're, what they're teaching them horses is uh, completely opposite of what I'm looking for and how I want my head horses to, uh, how I want them broke before I rope on them and actually how they're able to uh, conduct the maneuvers also the the rainers are taught you know their heads too low um, a lot of times they don't put back cinches on them you know there's really no sense of urgency to do anything uh, everything's done in voice commands very light you know straight lines and all that so which I mean for s some people I think that uh, they might work for me they hadn't um, that's one thing I like about the cutting and the cow horse if they do come out of a training program is man they've been taught to go fast and they stop and they turn a lot and so they're you know which i think plays into a lot of the maneuvers that we do in team roping there is one background that uh, that i've had the most success with and now i've kind of made it to where it's almost a prerequisite to uh, uh that they have to have this this experience for me to be interested in buying them as a three or a four year old and that is uh, a horse with uh, with extensive ranching background and what I mean by that is uh, it's not just you know a horse spin out there and check cows or anything like that what I'm looking for is a horse if I'm gonna buy him at the end of his three-year-old year or beginning of his four-year-old year, -old year um, I want that horse to have had at least one season of or a year of roping and doctoring outside possibly sorting in a feedlot, sorting in the corral, loading trucks. Um, I think that what I've found is that those horses, not only are they easier to teach how to be a head horse, number one, I mean, they already know how to run, raid a cow if they've roped outside. They know how to get a hold of something, stop, uh, usually stand there and ground tie. They have a lot of the manner, mannerisms and manners that I look for in, uh, in my young head horses. And what I've seen is really doesn't take a whole lot to really introduce them to coming out of the box. I mean, that's really the only missing piece of the puzzle is they understand everything in the arena. You have to fine tune it, of course, but it's, it comes very easy to them. And I feel like the other part of it is, is those horses have had a lot of pressure put on them at a young age. And that might include, I mean, they might have to go and you know, sort pairs and uh, not be able to, I mean, they have to go and be in the moment as far as maybe not being as correct as say a horse in training might be. I mean, they have to go and they, they're there to get a job done. And as long as a good hand's riding him and they have them long enough and uh, you got to start with the right horse. I mean, these are the, those are the type that have worked for me. And um, like I said, they know what a, they know what a day's work is and Whenever I start roping on them, it's a day off for them and it comes very easy. And it makes my job a lot more enjoyable. But I think there's a lot for a lot that we need to take into consideration in uh, whenever we're starting these young head horses. And I mean, that's the purpose of this podcast was just to kind of bring to light that all of these horses have a past and we need to take that into consideration and not get frustrated when things fall apart or they're not reacting the way that we want them to. And anyway, just really remember that what they did in their first life is uh, something we got to take into consideration and move forward. And uh, I think if we do that with a good attitude then and an open mind, I think that uh, you'll end up with a good result. I hope you all found some value in this podcast and I look forward to doing another one down the road.
Everybody, thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Short Score. It's a special roping lesson. These are one of your favorites. We're hoping we're going to have more of these in the coming year. And remember, this episode is brought to you by the American Paint Horse Association's Cowgirl Gathering. This event is going to pay out big money, $250,000 in Fort Worth Stockyards, November 13th to the 15th for breakaway ropers, team ropers, and barrel racers.